This week's tip of the week, guys, is to go over a structure map. This is what normally everybody's fish finder looks like. Several icons, they all look the same. You don't know what you're looking at. This is what structure map looks like looking at those icons and without those icons. And as you can tell, you don't really need it if you have structure map available on your HDS. Here's how to do it. Go to your sonar page, go to advanced, go to log sonar. Now on right here, you want to just rename it. And when we back up a screen there, we want to save that to the external memory of some kind. A memory card is a lot better than the internal memory. Some of them can get pretty big in size. Top left of the screen, it has that blinking red dot that tells us that we are recording our, our sonar. On my Lowrance map, all I'm going to do is just kind of drive around. I usually turn on my structure overlay, and it is running live right now. That's not recording. It's just showing me what I'm seeing underneath the boat at that time. I'm going to go ahead and let it record for a little while. Let the boat drive around. As you can tell in front of my boat, I got a blue line and a red line. The blue line is off my point one antenna and it gives me heading of the boat. The red line is my course over ground. So that's where the boat is moving toward, even though it's headed in one direction, maybe moving toward another direction. So that's the, kind of the deviation between the two. And this is why it's going to be important. We'll be able to show you why that's important later on when we, uh, when we get our, our map all laid out. We're going to speed up the mapping a little bit, kind of what's underneath the boat. This particular area is not is, is more like a desert than anything else. There's one boulder field out here that's really interesting right along deep water. Other than that, the lake overall doesn't have a whole lot of structure to it. So as we get into that boulder field, you can see them start to show up. That's, that's primarily what I'm looking at, and that's what we're trying to map. It's deep enough there that we probably want to drop shot on that or cast two individual rocks to crankbaits. No, this isn't real time. We're sped up. There's a lot of bait fish around that area, as you can tell. I use the live. That way we can kind of keep our, it's kind of like mowing the yard. You want to kind of keep your distance and be as efficient with your boat maneuvering as you can so you don't have to overlay and stitch those images together quite so much. As you can tell there, looking to the left, you can see how those rocks are lining up from where I was going, say, north and versus where I'm going back south. This really helps out stitching together, and that's because my antenna is back above my transducer. If you did not have that, if you're mapping your GPS antenna is at your helm, you'll actually see an offset between those two, those two tracks. So we've straightened that out with our install, proper installs key to making this all work like it should. Okay, I'm done with mapping that boulder field that I was interested in, so I'm just going to go to my menu and go to Advanced and go to Stop Sonar. So now, now that it's done recording, just go to your menu, go to your files. Go down where you named that on your memory card. Mine was named Boulder. When I highlight that, I'll get some options there. Just create structure map. Turn on your high resolution and save it to that memory card. Anytime you have a memory card, uh, that's where that structure map will be at. I just relabel it because one's an SL3 file. One's going to be a, a shape different different style file so I just name it two different things go ahead and let it convert 
and although I did speed this up a little bit, it's pretty much real time. I think the whole time I spent mapping and converting was like less than 13 minutes to that entire boulder field. So it doesn't take a lot of time. I'm done. We're going to back out of that. Back out of this. We're back on the water. We're going to turn off our structure scan live stuff. And that's, we're going to go back to our saved structure scan file, bottom left. And start zooming in and seeing what kind of structure we we're able to drive over. So now we're driving back, trying to navigate back toward that boulder field. And as you can tell, the blue line's leading us in one direction, the red line's going another, which tells me the waves are probably hitting the side of the boat. The boat's kind of going, pointed one way and moving another. At the bottom right, you can kind of see uh, just how how much area an inch takes up. You know, whether it's 20 foot, I think, to a, we'll say three quarters of an inch down there at the bottom. Kind of gives you an idea how big the structure is that you're looking at on the screen. So I can start seeing those boulders come up. And at this point in time, <clears throat> the guy may want to jump up on the trolling motor and start navigating in between and picking out the big boulders that he wants to pitch at. Or drop shot on. Pretty unique structure out there, especially for a lake that doesn't have much of a structure at all. One thing that's going to really help me, especially if we're casting a crankbait or something like that, is we'll go back into our settings here. And we're going to turn on our range rings in a second. That's kind of what's underneath the boat at the time. There is a few fish scattered in throughout there, but a lot of them are so tight to that structure, I don't think we'd be able to see them on sonar. Right, go ahead and run our settings. Just go to your chart, turn on your range rings. We already have our heading extension and our course extension on our page there. So now we know which way the boat's facing. At the bottom right, where we had our 20 feet before, it still gives us a clue of what distance on the map but it also gives us our range rings so right now we're at 100 feet so the first line's 100 feet away from the boat and the blue line's telling us exactly which way the boat's headed so if you start to drift off drift off your course the red line may move but the blue line will always be pointed toward the front of the boat so now you're pretty well orientated the best you can be on the water as far as being able to pitch to things that you can't see now, everything that's on that screen is over 20 feet below me so to, to find that structure and be able to throw accurately at that structure, you kind of need both of those things, your range rings and your, and your heading extension. I'm going to make one more pass through here, and you kind of look at it on the sonar versus what we're seeing on the structure map we built versus what's going underneath the boat with our uh, structure scan kind of brings it all together we could probably if we were wanting to drop shot we probably just use our 2d and possibly our our structure map on the left and get ourselves over over these target rich areas where we can't keep putting waypoint on top of waypoint out on top of waypoint just clusters things up this really helps to pitch toward things and you don't have to have a waypoint you can you see it and you can throw to it any target rich environment is be huge as far as helping to throw to isolated structure or into these brush piles. You don't have to mark every side of the brush pile. You can just mark, you can just scan over the brush pile and get your boat on top of it and drag a jig through it. This really helps for ice fishermen too. If the water's not hard yet, go over there, scan everything, come back when the ice is on and you can go ahead and drill your hole right on top of a, right on top of a brush pile and just jig down to it. And that's how I use structure map. And I think it's nice to have and a great addition. Thanks, guys.